Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Today, we have the first frost on the grass outside. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to fall. Happy fall. Equinox was last night in the middle of the night, and here we are going forward. Now, we are going to keep coffee short today, and I kept talking for saying we have baptisms coming up right after this. Anyway, so we'll go through this a little bit and enjoy a nice Padre Pio day. All right, the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Great, good times. It's a lovely weekend. Really, it is. And I give thanks to God for it. Let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate to the noble confession to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make a manifest at the proper time, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Know that the Lord is God. He made us, his we are, his people, the flock he tends. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. For he is good, the Lord, whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. 
After saying this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. He answered, knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest, they are made known through parables so that they may look but not see and hear but not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are the ones who have heard, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever this parable comes around in the course of the readings, it's always very nice because we get the, you know, the explanation of the parable also in the gospel. Thank you, Jesus, for preaching it, which is nice. The point of this, though, I think it also is a wonderful reminder that it's not just in like the teaching and then suddenly the having been taught and heard that this comes to an end and now we can check the box and move on. It's worth talking about, it's worth enjoying. Yesterday, I had a really fun experience with the students of the eighth grade of the choir school. They were having a retreat here at St. Mary's. And for their retreat, they asked me to say mass, which was great because it's Friday and so it's actually my day off. And so I didn't otherwise have mass scheduled, so very convenient. And then I went with them and did a little hike, which, those crazy children, they decided that on the course of their hike along the Provo River, they should actually jump into the river as well and go swimming. I'm not in charge of this. I would not do this. It was very cold, I am sure. And yes, again, today is the first day of the frost on the grass. Okay. Anyway, I'm sure they had a wonderful time. What I talked to them about was the idea of religion so in this uh, letter of Timothy that we've been reading, this, this letter of St. Paul to Timothy, there are two of them, two letters that is. Um, one of the things that St. Paul talks about is like the nature of religion, not just of faith, but of religion. And that was the reading yesterday. True religion is blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I mentioned that religion has essentially four parts. One, which is taught. The belief, the, the thing which is, you know, you can express, you can teach it, you can hear it, and you can talk about it. Then the belief part, what it actually like does in the heart. Then the action part, what you do with it, how that actually gets expressed, not just in ritual, but also in action, in the charity sense, in the Christian idea. It turns into a variety of things. It gets lived out in the life in a very holistic way. And finally, truth, actually, I, it, it, the, 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 the real kind of the fuel into all of these things is that it is actually of God, especially, again, in the Christian sense. Now, the interesting thing that I would mention from that idea today is that as we are talking about this parable that our Lord explains, that first part about the teaching, it's not completely done ever. You don't get like over it. There's no finishing having heard all the teaching and all the expression of all the, not just theology or doctrine or whatever, but the, the chewing on it and also getting something out of it. That doesn't have an end, certainly not in the Catholic context in which we live. We believe very much so that the word of God is always at work 
And so when we read, for example, a nice little parable like this, it also has its own explanation right there. It's not a superficial thing. If anything, it's an even bigger invitation to go deep with it. It is that much more effective at prompting a good reflection by those who hear it. And for those who preach about these things, who are not just me, but really should be everyone, especially in the context of those four things, the life lived out part is a, is a really big one, especially again, in terms of the Christian idea. The, the kind of preaching that we have is one that's not just, again, about the words, the first one, but how that actually affects the heart and gets lived out. The reason why I was preaching on those four things also is because once upon a time in the choir school, there was a prayer that the singers, the, the actual members of the choir would say and that I know pretty well, grant Lord that what we sing with our lips, we may believe in our hearts, what we believe in our hearts, we may show forth in our lives through Christ our Lord, amen. <laughs> you know, it's a nice cute little, little prayer, but it usually also happens that way, especially for people who are in a situation like that, say students in a Catholic school or students in this Catholic school in particular. They learn the words first. That's what you learn first. Then it starts hopefully to mean something in the heart and then it gets lived out because it's true. That's also very much the case for us really in all of the things that we encounter with the word. May it always be so. Now, I said I, we have to be quick today because we have to do the baptisms now. It's, it's that time we got to go. All right, so that's all the time I have for that. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father's prayer intention this month, those persons living on the margins of society and in inhumane conditions may not be overlooked by institutions, never considered of a lesser importance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may grow ever closer to Christ, meditating on the sorrows of his mother, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who take their blessings for granted, that they be blessed with generosity of spirit and seek to live a life of thanksgiving, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have vowed themselves to God, that with his help they may faithfully keep to their resolve, and listen to their movement of a spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And through the intercession of St. Monica, for all our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest, St. Pius, a share in the cross of your son, and by means of his ministry, renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession, we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Yeah, sorry, I didn't get a chance to talk about St. Padre Pio. St. Pius, that's his name. Pius of Pietrelcina. Great guy. I love Padre Pio. Everyone should. Who does not? So I'm also... <clears throat> one of the people who have who actually did enjoy the Padre Pio movie that came out this last year that not everyone liked at all. Um, obviously not entirely about Padre Pio. That's kind of like a side story in the movie. But the, the point of it, though, is this. Padre Pio, very interesting character, very real, true Franciscan, definitely very holy and saintly, but also a man of passion. Padre Pio is a very worthwhile saint. Today's his feast day. Enjoy. All right, I have to go do the other things. All right, see everyone tomorrow. Have a lovely Saturday. It's gonna be a very busy one for us here today. God bless you all. Bye-bye.